Hey, welcome back to the Glycogen Cycling Channel. Today we are going to be doing a long-term review, and I dropped a shoe, on the Bontrager Triple X Road Shoe. So sit back, relax, hit that like button, and let's get into the video. Yeah. Hey everybody, my name is E-Double, their name is PJ Harvey. Let's go. These shoes are actually really good. I've been really happy with them. Uh, they're super, super stiff. So the reason you want a super stiff shoe is because when you're pedaling, you want you don't want any flex because when you when you have flex, you lose power or energy through that flex. You want a stiff surface to have as much power transfer as possible from your legs to the pedals and then through the bike to the wheels. Uh, these are a great shoe for that, super stiff. It's the stiffest shoe Bontrager makes. So if you're looking to race, these are a good option to look at. Uh, another thing I really like is the BOA. I actually haven't ridden uh, the lace-up shoes, but in my opinion, it's just super convenient if you're mid-race or whatever, just to you know, be able to tighten or loosen just slightly to get your comfort exactly where you want. Some people say that, you know, you can never really get uh, the tightness exactly where you want on your foot. But in my opinion, you know, just from wearing shoes or wearing lace up hockey skates, the laces tend to even out as you ride longer and longer or, you know, whatever. So. In my opinion, BOA is the way to go. You can lock in exactly where you want to be with the clicking mechanism, and it's gonna stay like that for your entire ride. One thing I will say is these shoes are slightly narrow. So if we come over here and look at my feet really quick, you can see when I stand up, I have this little bone that comes out of my foot, which is, I don't know if that's normal, but you can let me know in the comments if you have that. But I crashed and I actually put a hole in these shoes right here. And on this shoe, I've crashed before in a little scuff mark right there. So when I've done really long rides, my feet do tend to hurt on the outside right there. So that's one thing to be aware of if you have wide feet like I do. One other thing I'd like to mention is we have these grips up top which are not replaceable but this one on the heel is so you can buy a replacement heel for these shoes if you wear them out uh, one thing i have noticed on my old shoe is the top part is a slightly different which i i think i like a little bit better because on these you you know tear up the toe a little bit on the carbon when you're walking like i was saying these shoes are slightly narrow but that being said, you do get used to them. Um, I have pretty wide feet and I still really like these shoes. I've taken them on some crazy, crazy cycling adventures. So there's not really, like, I've, I've beat these to the ground. I've done two Everstings. I've ridden across the state of Florida and back, which was 26 hours in these shoes. I've done, uh, five centuries in a row on these shoes. So like, I've, I've done a lot of things on these shoes and I've never really had any serious problems. Yes, when I get above six, seven hours on the bike, my feet do tend to hurt a little bit on the outside, but I think that's gonna be normal with any shoe and just, you know, being fatigued on the bike, you're gonna have a little bit of slight, slightly different pedal stroke, so with that said, I think these are a good option if you're looking to do some long, heavy endurance rides or race, either either or. They're a good shoe for that. So the last thing I want to get into, which you're probably all wondering, is why the heck do you have three shoes here, all of the same kind? And that's because this one has recently broke. So the BOA has actually broken off from the shoe itself. If we get in here, I can show you. The actual BOA 
which is sewed into the shoe here has broken off which holds this mechanism in. So if this top piece breaks off, you can replace that, but this part is not replaceable. You can see it's actually sewed into the shoe. So there's this shoe is basically worthless now. <laughs> it works in every other way, but because of this, it is busted. And you can see right here, I have a hole in the shoe. And I think the reason this actually busted was because I had a crash recently putting that hole in the shoe. And I believe the boa hit the ground and cracked the plastic here. So why I'm telling you that is because my friend bought these on a discount and couldn't return them. They didn't fit him, so he ended up giving them to me to make a long story short. So I have another pair of these, but because these shoes are actually very expensive, I think they were $400 at the time I got them. So I wanna do a little math to see exactly how much these shoes are worth. So what I did is I headed over to Strava.com and I searched all the way back to October 2015, which is when I started to use these shoes. And I calculated that I have ridden 41,896 miles on these shoes over the last, you know, five years, basically. So with that said, I popped open the calculator, put in $400, divided that by 41,896, and it came out to just under one penny per mile for the, to, to wear these shoes. So let me know in the comments whether you think that's a, whether that's a good deal or not. I think it's, you know, penny per mile is not that bad. Uh, obviously your results may vary. If I didn't crash, these shoes would probably still be going, so. That being said, I think it was time. I noticed the boa on these new shoes are actually a lot more sturdy and the grip isn't worn off completely. So I think it was definitely time for a new pair. Um, again, these shoes have been through multiple, multiple crashes and have been fine over the last five years. So hopefully you guys got a lot of, out of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next one.